On the weekend just gone, my buddies and I went up north for a little surf trip and I decided to take my camera like I usually do and I did manage to capture a few steals along with some b-roll so that's what today's video is going to be about. It's the first video I'm sharing with you here where I'm not shooting on my Fujifilm which is a bit of a surprise to some of you and also to some of my friends and especially the guys I went on the trip with but I wanted to make sure I had a bit of variety on the shoot as well as a bit of variety here on the channel so yeah I hope you enjoy. So off the bat given that I did shoot on the a7 III it meant that I did have a bit of variety with the lenses I took. I decided to take my 55, my 35 as well as my 24 to 70 but on the day I only really shot with a 24 to 70 like the shoot was really rushed. Um, I was actually surfing as well so I didn't have a ton of time to be changing lenses and also like the sand was a real pain so with all of that I decided to just keep on the same lens and the 24 to 70 where it's great for the variety I was looking for. As many of you would have a zoom lens starting out I have been a big fan of them over the time especially for these run and gun kind of shoots if I did have my time to set up compositions I'd always prioritize using a prime um, unfortunately like I mentioned that wasn't the case this time but the 24 to 70 held up great so just consider that if you do have a zoom, like you will have that variety. Obviously primes are gonna be much better quality in the long run and have a bit more of a look that you can get creative with, but the zooms for big days and small days are just great. So the trip we were going on was about two hours away and so I had to get up super early and meet my buddies at my other friend's house so we could all pack the car and go together. Heads up. You're gonna get you're gonna get some absolute frames of yourself. Once we arrived, we drove onto the beach and we parked up. I think it was about 8 o'clock, 8.30 we were there. And so the light was really nice and light. At this point, um, the sand was acting as a really nice reflector. It was a bit of a bounce card like along the whole ground. And so a lot of the photos I managed to capture early in the morning came out great. Um, I did overexpose like I usually do, um, even in this uh, early time. but. Overall, those photos did come out better compared to the ones throughout the day. Obviously, I understand that you're gonna get nicer shots the earlier you shoot during the day, the light's gonna be better, but even up there in the dunes, we were there at 8.30 and the dune was just acting as a mad reflector and so a lot of the photos were coming out really blown out to start with, so I did have to push up my shutter quite a lot and eventually I found a few settings that made the photos look great. I did have a friend ask me after this day how I edited these photos because the ones early in the morning were overexposed and quite bright, but they weren't really blown out. Um, I think that was to do with like the way I shot it, but especially to do with how I edited. So if we jump into Lightroom right now, I can kind of show you what I was thinking and how I got it to look the way it does. Okay, so now that we're in Lightroom, I'm gonna run you through the editing process for one of these photos. Um, this is the full gallery you would have seen in the video, but I've decided that we're gonna run through this photo of Nick getting ready. So if we hit the D uh, letter and 
opens up the develop tab, you'll see that this is what we're working with. So if I just quickly reset this, this is what the photo looked like out of camera and that's the raw Sony file. And if we just double check the uh, info, we'll see that this was shot at 1 800th at f3.2 and the ISO is all the way down at 50. So for anyone that's seen any of my past editing tutorials, you would see that like I do follow the same basic adjustments and similar with the tone curve. The colors obviously depends uh, or changes depending on the photo, but for now the um, basic adjustments is what we're gonna go over. So this is the original and this is the finished copy. So as you can see, I've initially bumped up the exposure to plus 0.30. So again, even though it was quite overexposed, the background, I mean, um, Nick wasn't um, bright enough. And so to bring that up, I brought up the overall exposure. The way I got Nick to kind of pop out from the background was with the blacks. So he's wearing a black wetsuit. And so pushing that up as well as the shadows really brought in um, some detail um, for Nick. And so look, it could even go up a little bit more. And so that's why um, the photo looks a bit more balanced. Even though like the right hand side is blown out, um, it's not blown out where it's clipping any highlights. So if you hit this button up here, uh, I'll hit it again, and then you push the highlights, it should turn red and show you everything that's full white blown out. So let's not worry about that. Highlights all the way down, shadows are up. Here the whites, I did drop them down a bit because if they were at zero, it was just a bit too bright for me. Um, so the whites is a really great way to bring that back. Um, again, like usual, clarity is down and the vibrance I did push a little bit because I wanted the blue to pop. Um, this is just something I like doing with um, these sorts of photos. Um, and yeah, I wouldn't push it much further, but you certainly could if you wanted to. Um, and finally, before going on to color the tone curve, so if I flatten this, you'll see that the tone curve does do a quad, quite a lot of work when it comes to contrast. And so bring that in, it's really pumped up the mid-tones right where Nick is, and also just dropping this down a bit gives us a bit more edge to the photo, a bit of contrast there as well. Um, moving finally onto the coloring, um, you would see that I've kept the blues pretty standard just because I was really happy with how it was looking. Um, and everything else, it's like a blue and orange. That's kind of the tone I was going for there. Um, detail finally is at 60 and noise reduction at four, pretty standard for me. And then, yeah, the profile corrections were on and no adjustments um, to the vignetting. But here I did decide to put a bit of grain in. It's honestly really small, you can't see much. I did release the photo originally at around 30. I don't usually like to put a ton of grain in, but I just thought for a photo like this, it would look kind of cool. But I elected to go back to my kind of look and kept it pretty low. So yeah, that's pretty much how I edited this photo of Nick. So that's all for today, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this little travel photography video along with the edit. Um, again, this was shot on the a7 III, which is a little different to what I like to do, but I think it's a good thing moving forward to use different cameras. Um, I'm looking at doing a little film series soon, so if that's something that interests you, leave a comment below. But otherwise, if you do enjoy this video or my other videos or even just hearing me speak, it would be awesome if uh, you subscribed and liked or even just followed me on Instagram. And if you do have any questions, like be sure to just follow and message me because I usually get back to you guys pretty quick. So for, for now, like that's pretty much all and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.